All right. Adam Chester, live in the flesh here at live. Hennessy Studios. Yes. Thank you for having me. This is cool. Thank you. So before we kind of get into the whole thing, first of all, you and I have never met before. Never met. Right? Never met. I can. I love your energy level right ah, off the bat. Thank you. Um, but uh, I want to talk about something that's probably personal. Uh-oh. Yeah. Oh, no. So you had a, a, a milestone anniversary recently. Look at you with huh. the info. Right? Wow, that's impressive. Uh, yeah, it was uh, 20, 20 years. 20 years? 20 years with my wife. Congratulations, man. Yeah. I gave her a great going away present, and uh, I think she's pretty happy about it. Huh. What's yeah. the going away present? It was a, just a parting gift. Okay. Yeah, I told her to get out now. <laughs> 20 years, that's it. I'm done. Thanks. 20 years. So I think my wife and I are after 20, you lose count, my friends. Oh, so you're after 20? I'm after 20. Good for you. I'm 23 now. Yeah, I think. That's impressive. 99. So I think 23. Yeah. Very, very impressive. But it's okay because my wife loses count too, so we don't blame each other anymore <laughs> for that. But yeah, man, you have done your research. Yes. Well, it's public, right? And, and, yes, and it is. how could I not see... How special of a post you created on your Instagram. Oh, right. I don't even remember what I put. Um, so you put a nice story about oh, your first with, date. With the, the Sushi Nozawa. Yes. Yeah. Tell that story. Oh, it's a great, it's a great story. Okay. So, so that was my, that was my jam. I, I loved going for sushi at, uh, it was called Nozawa Sushi before Chef Nozawa owned Sugarfish. Okay. And he had this tiny little hole in the wall that even Seinfeld ripped uh, with the, um, uh, with the, w w no soup for you. Yeah, the oh, soup Nazi. Oh, yes. So, so uh -huh. Nozawa was the sushi Nazi. Interesting. And if you asked for too much wasabi, he'd kick you out of the restaurant. His wife was the hostess and she was very nervous about you, you know, asking for a California roll or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And it was a great first date. Okay. And I told my, uh, my date at the time, it was my, my wife now, I said, Maria, listen, the, uh, the deco in this place is all neon. It's really scary looking, but the food is great. Hmm. And she's like, oh, okay. Uh, so we went there, had an amazing time, and it just became our go-to restaurant. So cut to 20 years later, I ended up playing a party for the CEO of uh, Sugarfish. Okay. I was playing piano. And uh, his name's Jerry, and I said, Jerry, my, my 20's coming up, and I want to do something special. Is there any way to have Chef Nozawa come out and cook for us? And he says, no, he's in retirement, but I can tr probably get you a video of him saying happy anniversary. So he got that for me, and it's Nozawa and his wife. Uh, she's speaking happy anniversary to you and your wife. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And then Nozawa doesn't say anything, so the wife hits him. Oh, 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 uh, happy anniversary. <laughs> and it was just such a perfect example of marriage uh, and a great, great uh, little, you know, passing gift. So special, Yeah, it was man. cool. It was so really cool. Special. But, but the bummer is he didn't, neither he or his wife said happy anniversary, Adam and Maria. Mm -hmm. So basically anybody can use this tape See? now. There you go. I'm giving you the, the in here. Oh, I love it, yep. man. Right. Just we use might it for have your side business here. <laughs> <laughs> no, Zawa wishes you happy anniversary. <laughs> yes. Very cool. So cool. Yeah, so yeah. 20 years, how many kids have you got? Uh, two, we have two boys, uh, um, uh, 18 and uh, 15. Oh, so it's their world. You're just living in it at this yeah, point. Yeah, huh? it, it is their world. Yep. 18 and 15. <sighs> huh. I came here to rest. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll talk about the kids as well. Okay. <laughs> so cool. do you consider yourself a sushi snob or what? Uh, pretty much. I, I'm a snob when it comes to everything. I, I'm a snob uh, with, with glasses. I love wearing cool glasses. Yeah. Um, I'll never As you have on right now. Thank you. Yeah. I, I'll yeah. never get that eye surgery. Cause to me, glasses are, uh, you know, a way to change your personality a little bit. Sure. Um, I'm a snob when it comes to orange balls that I squeeze, <laughs> uh, which sounds wrong on the, uh, on the audio here, but I'm squeezing an orange ball here that says, find your fire. And I wouldn't have touched this if I didn't like it. See, so, yeah, it I'm is. a snob when it comes to everything. We change lives here at Hennessy Jesus, did Studios, I say I'm a right? snob when it comes to orange balls? That's so messed up. <laughs> that's a sound clip. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's brilliant. 
Have you ever been to like Japan? Have you ever been? I haven't been to Japan. No. no. Okay. Um, I, I furthest I got west was Australia, and that was that was beautiful. I could have stayed there. So I I've never tried sushi. I don't even eat what? fish. What? So maybe maybe I will break that mold and we'll go have sushi one oh, day. Oh, you you would love it. Yes, that I would mean, be like my wife and my kids have tried to get me to eat fish for like twenty plus years, and well, I've never done it. Okay, yet. so my youngest son Marcello, he's fifteen, and he uh, didn't like sushi. Okay, and he never tried it. He just decided he didn't like it. Mm -hmm. And so we got him a, an eel roll because they have to cook that a little. They sear it or smoke it or something. Yeah. Can we curse on this, by the way? Yeah. Cool. Uh -huh. So anyway, uh, so he's eating it and then he says, this shit is good. <laughs> and, you know, he was five at the time. So, <laughs> you know, it was all good. You got to just give it a whirl. I like his style. Yeah, yeah. So let's get into uh, what you do for a living because it's a little unique. And, 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 and I need to know what I do for a living because I'm not sure at this point <laughs> in my life. I would say there would be people that would consider this a dream job. It is. It, it's very much a dream job. Yeah. So tell the listeners who, are, who have never heard of Adam Chester uh, what you do and who you are. So uh, I uh, sit in for Sir Elton John at the piano and I sing and play his parts for rehearsals so he doesn't have to rehearse the band. And oh, just, I, just that. Just that. <laughs> and then I conduct for him on occasion. I arrange for him. Uh, we share jokes together. Uh, on occasion, he'll compliment my glasses uh, and as I do his. And uh, it's, it's pretty cool for a kid who, and I say kid because I was, you know, like, eight years old when I found Elton and, uh, and I was like, that is awesome. That huh. music. So it's really weird that I'm doing what I do because I've always been a fan. Sure. And it, it freaks my friends out that they call me the surrogate Elton John. So I'm Sir Elton with a UR instead of Sir with an IR. Huh. Uh, Cause I sit in for him. So cool. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome. So I want to hear the story of how this came about. How did you meet Elton? How did uh, this all happen? Well, you want the X-rated version or the clean? The clean version is this. Uh, I, I went to USC for music school. Okay. And I graduated with a music degree. And I thought, well, what am I going to do now? So I got a job in a music plus which was a big record store out here in Los Angeles, uh, Los Angeles at the time. And one of my customers one day walked in and I'm like, holy shit, that's Davey Johnstone. Mm -hmm. And Davey has been Elton's guitarist since 1971. And he came in with his wife at the time. And uh, I was like, oh my God. And I grabbed an album because CDs were new at that time. I'm dating myself, but sure. screw it. And uh, I said, so what do you think of this crap? And he says, ah, I think it's uh, it's pretty decent music. Mm -hmm. And um, his wife, who had been coming in a lot, uh, uh, introduced me. And we built uh, a friendship. And soon Davey and I, uh, he was playing gigs for me. He was playing on my original tracks. And cut to 2004. Uh, he said, hey, we need someone to rehearse the band. Would you be into it? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so so that's how it began. Okay. And, um, and then they got a CD of what we were rehearsing here in L.A. to Elton. And Elton heard it and said, hey, why don't we bring him to Boston and New York and he can rehearse us there and... That's where it all started. And I met Elton actually in Boston. For the first uh, time? For the first time in 2005. And I'll never forget it. You, you know, it's one of those moments that's, you know, burnt into my memory because it was, I was scared shitless. I, I really was. Yeah. Because uh, he was my hero. Um, and uh, it was just one of the most pleasant, okay, that's done. Uh, yeah. and, and it, it was really, really cool. And then my job just kept getting bigger and bigger as the years went on. And, um, it's been awesome just to, 
just to hear him say hi Truman, hi Marcello to my kids. Wow. And uh, even though those aren't my kids' names, and uh, <laughs> and it's like it was really cool um, <laughs> just to get emails from him. What whatever. It's it's amazing. But that's how it all started. Wow. So so you said he was like an, an idol of yours since you were totally, eight years old. Totally. I mean, I, I remember listening to Funeral for a Friend mm -hmm. for the first time on the radio. I was maybe 10, 10 years old, maybe 11. And, uh, and it was just one of those songs that wasn't your typical song because mm -hmm. it was like 12 minutes long. Yeah. And that was unheard of back in, I guess it was 76 when I first first really started getting into him mm -hmm. and uh and i was just addicted i was looking for bootlegs and live recordings i was pretending to be him on the keyboard in my in my apartment that i had with my mom and and where was uh, this where this was up? in miami in miami i okay. grew up in miami beach uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Um, moved from Jersey when my dad passed away, uh, my mom and I moved to, uh, Miami, okay. uh, to be close to her parents. And so I really consider Miami kind of my old time home. Okay. Um, but, but that's where it all started, you know, chasing down live bootlegs and learning his stuff and, y you know, um, just an absolute fan without being freaky. Huh. So now when you were young, eight years old, were you playing the piano? Yes. Yeah. I was playing piano when I was like, uh, four, um, well, a prodigy, huh? Yeah. But, but not really. I was more of a compositional prodigy than a playing piano prodigy. Okay. Um, cause I would write songs even when I was four or five and as simple and goofy and stupid as they are um it was really cool it's probably like songs that had the word poop in it and right <laughs> yeah and, and how did, did you hear some of that song? i've heard all okay, your, your right, tracks so from back then um, yeah. Uh, uh -huh. yeah there's one like really goofy tune that that it didn't even have lyrics but i thought it was genius and i mean you know it was just fun to come up with your own ideas and and then it was a fun way to get girls and and meet girls at the time because uh -huh. you know you'd write all these songs and i digress but it's a great story i wrote um this girl uh sarah a song okay and i had such a crush on her i was 13 i was getting bar mitzvahed and uh she came to my bar mitzvah and she hated me and i didn't realize sarah hated me but i wrote her this stupid love song and i wrote the lyrics down on a paper and I gave it to her at her bat mitzvah, okay. which was like two months before my bar mitzvah. And all Jewiness aside, <laughs> she <laughs> she made me the laughing stock of the entire school the next day. And I thought, you know, I, I just wrote a song for the girl. It was the cutest thing. And she made me out to be this villain. So I have pictures of her at my bar mitzvah. Uh -huh. with her giving me this face like <laughs> and i look at that today and i laugh and she won't she won't talk to me now uh it's it's very funny huh uh wants nothing to do with me and i i get it you know i have that effect on people <laughs> well Fucking sarah nice. will will hear this we'll make sure sarah hears this no right. you won't <laughs> crazy family yeah. Oh, that's so cool. So you've been playing <laughs> piano since, since I was a kid. kid. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And just, it became a passion of yours and you can. Yeah, yeah. It was just something that I always did. It, it's how I function. It's how I communicate. It's, um, you know, I'd be lost without. Well, well there's you know. a scene in, uh, you ever seen the movie Good Will Hunting? Oh, sure. Great movie, right? Yeah. There's a scene where like, you know, the, the girl, Julia, Julia, I think her name, what's her name? I can't remember the girl from, uh. The, the movie. I don't remember. Oh, it was, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, with the curly hair. We'll have to figure it out. Yeah. Um, but anyway, she, God. she's sitting there with him and she's wondering how does he like know this math? Or right. How can he do this homework? And it's he explains it as it's like, you know, Mozart sits down at a piano and mm. he can just see the keys. Right. Yeah. Skylar. Yes. Skylar. So, hey, that's mini it. driver mini driver mini driver yes that's it. so there's a scene where matt damon is talking to mini driver right right and uh and she looks at him and he's doing her math because he wants to go on a date with her right, right. and he's just like here like let's let me just do this for you right and he just does her math like real quickly She's i gotta watch struggling. that again such a great movie right yeah so then 
she says, how do you do that? Like, how do you, I don't get it. And he goes, just imagine it's like when Mozart just kind of sits down at a piano, like he just like to me and you, like, I just see like white and black chords. Right. Mm. But to him, he just plays. Right. Yeah. Was that you? Yeah. That that's me. I did. You just reminded me. I, I was one of, um, when Marie and I had moved into my apartment mm -hmm. together, um, there was a Ben Folds five CD that I had to buy and I bought it and we listened to it. And I said, you want to see something scary? And she said, yeah, sure. And uh, I put the song on and then I walked over to the piano and I played it. And she said, how do you do that? And I said, I have no idea. Huh. And, and it's just something that I inherently do. I can hear something and play it. Um, it freaks people out, but I find it kind of rudimentary. I, I just, is that the right word? No, that's the right word, yeah. Thank you, I haven't used that in a sentence in a long time. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I don't know. It's just something weird. Uh, huh. It clicks in me and I can literally sit and play for hours and not repeat a song. Uh, mm -hmm. cause I'll just sit there and start writing stuff. And, um, it's fun for me. I just wish I could make money on it. Uh, <laughs> uh that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, as far as uh, working with Sir Elton, yes. do you call him Sir Elton? No, I call him E. You call him E. Everybody, Is that what everybody him knows e. him? Call yeah. him E. Yeah. E okay. or just Elton or whatever. E. So yeah. if I see him in a music store, E, he won't appreciate I that. Do, yeah, no. Yeah, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not a good idea. Have you been talking to Adam? <laughs> no fucker, I'll kill him. So uh, do you have to, like, know, like, like every Everything. single song yeah, yeah you yeah. do yeah yeah because the band relies on me you know and and so i like to tell people you know i i've been told this before they're like why don't you go on the road and do an elton john impersonation show yeah and i said yeah that's not what i ever ever want to do <laughs> um a because i just it's not me I mean, there are people out there who imitate Elton so much better than I do. Yeah. And it's not about imitation. It's about, I play his music as if I wrote the songs. Mm -hmm. And so there's a sincerity that comes across when I do this stuff. And, and plus I sing in his original higher voice because I'm a high tenor and he doesn't hit those notes anymore, which is fine. But it's like when I go to rehearsal, I'm so energized by the fact that I'm sitting there with these heroes of mine, mm -hmm. you know, the Elton John band. And it's just so crazy that I'm doing what I'm doing and I'm psyched. So I'm singing the hell out of these songs and the band gets charged by that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's almost more fun to work with me, they say, than it is with Elton um, because, you know, I so enjoy what I do. Sure. There's no way not to enjoy it. Um, and we were supposed to go to Copenhagen in August and I had never been there because, and I was so looking forward to trying a real Danish, the pastry. Sure. And he canceled it cause he was having a hip replacement surgery. And, uh, so now we're supposed to go to new Orleans in January. Cool. And I'm like, new Orleans, <laughs> that's not Copenhagen. <laughs> and I've been there oh, for God's sake, but you know. You got to be appreciative for everything you, you get. Of course you do. And if it's a week trip or a month trip, uh, it, it's any time with that band and, you know, with Elton that makes it all worthwhile. Of course. Yeah. So I'm sure, you know, you probably have so many stories, right? Um, but is there one that kind of stands out that comes to mind where you're like, wow, pinch me. Is this really happening right now? Um, yeah, I guess the first uh, there, there's too many really, but, but the one that comes to mind is when I, I was in London, um, my wife made me change my business class ticket to coach. So she and the boys could go. Okay. And so we all flew coach the rest of the bands in first. And I'm like, you know, this is great. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we get to London and I composed and arranged the instrumental portion for Elton's single called Home Home Again. Okay. It was off of an album called The Diving Board. So I was flying out there to teach the Royal Academy of Music Choir what I had written and then rehearse them, rehearse the band, rehearse Elton, and then just enjoy the show. So uh, I got out there, I was having the time of my life 
And when that choir sang what I wrote at my piano in Sherman Oaks, in my apartment, in my house, um, I just wanted to cry. And then Elton came in and played the song with the choir. And so we went to lunch in the lunchroom and I'm sitting literally across the table from where you are right now mm -hmm. to Elton. And I said, so what do you think of that dissonance I did there when you hear those two voices? And he said, I loved it, absolutely loved it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we just had this conversation uh -huh. eye to eye about music. And uh, we go out there to play again, and my kids come to visit with my wife. And my kids, Truman and Marcello, who are little at the time, he starts playing Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting. Okay. And my kids start dancing all over the place and screaming. And I'm like, I'm gonna get kicked out of here. I'm gonna lose my job, I'm fucked. <laughs> and, and so Elton is looking at them, pointing and cracking up, and I'm like, oh, thank God, he seems happy. And I mean, we took a family photo, the four of us, and I still have it. It's, it's such a great photo. Uh -huh. and, uh, and it was just probably the best couple of days of my life with Elton. And, so sharing um, that moment uh, with, with your my family kids, and your with kids. With my wife. I mean, yes. it, was, it was just so amazing that I, I mean, it was proof that I was really doing this because mm -hmm. it's always a, a pincher. Yeah, sure, you work with Elton. Yep. But the fact that, this happened it just made it all so real yeah. um yeah so so that's one of my favorite stories. that's cool and i'm sure we could probably do a whole podcast oh, on man. just your just, stories you right? know when he takes off his glasses and he's just you know th there's no screen there it's just it's just a human being who just happened to write some of the greatest music on the planet of course and and i told david something david elton's husband i said you know some magazine once offered me uh, $10,000 to give him any dirt on Elton I could give him. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, I, I wouldn't do it if they offered a million. Mm. And he said, wow, thanks, Adam. I said, two million, maybe a million. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Uh, but they just, they know to trust me because, you know, I'm never going to talk shit about him. Sure, uh, sure. You know. Well, that's why you've been with him for so long yeah, and why he yeah. respects you just as much as you respect him. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> so what would you say is uh, something about working with Sir Elton, or as I can call him, E? e? Yes, I knew you were going to say that. Right? Uh, that, must, that might surprise people. Like, what's something interesting about either well, working with him? Well, it's changed a yeah. lot. And, and, and I would assume people could imagine this, but... Before he had kids, um, he seemed much more easily agitated uh, with things that went wrong on stage or whatever. And, uh, and I think since he's had the kids, he's definitely uh, become a lot more zen with everything. Hmm. And maybe winding down his career to his final farewell tour um, that is going on forever because of the pandemic. Um, you know, I, I just think he has much more of an understanding of where he falls in the scheme of things. Hmm. Um, so, but I, I don't know if that would be news to anyone. Um, uh, maybe. Uh, does kids, he drink? Does he drink like... Uh, doesn't drink Orange at all. juice? Oh, like, oh. I mean, like, what's one kind what's of interesting drink? tidbit about him that most people might not know? Uh, <laughs> that I could share? <laughs> uh, does anybody not know that that's a friggin' wig at this point? I mean... <laughs> I, I know he doesn't like to be seen without his uh, wig. I've never seen mm -hmm. him without that piece on. Sure. Um, it's an awesome looking hair piece. I got to tell you, uh -huh. it, it looks phenomenal. Sure. Um, you, you know, uh, <laughs> okay. So, so at the London bit, here we he, go. I'm he, getting, I'm getting no, the dirt. No, you're I'm getting, getting it out dirt. of me. Right. So, so he walks into the room. It's the first time I saw him and he literally was a bone. This was in 2013, he was thin. And I said, in the mic, in front of everybody, holy shit, you look great. <laughs> and you could hear a pin drop. And it was like, I mean, did I say something wrong? Yeah. But I guess he had some sort of a stomach virus, some shit that he went through. He lost a hell of a lot of weight. It wasn't under good circumstances, oh, I guess. Okay. But he looked amazing. Hey. And that's the picture I have with, with Thin Elton. <laughs> He's put on a few, but hey, so have I. Yeah, we all have. I'm fat. I don't know what to do. <laughs> but anyway, um, 
<laughs> so I don't even know why I brought that up. But I like it. What did you do? <laughs> Is there something in this Evian water? <laughs> Channeling my inner it. TMZ here, yeah. right? There it is. Oh, okay, fine. So he's had some interesting collaborations that you wouldn't think Sir Elton would That's have, him. right? Yep. Like Ozzy Osbourne, mm -hmm. even Eminem. Yep, Charlie uh, Puth most recently. Is that right? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's oh. got a new tune called um, Always, is it? Something like that. Okay. Um, huh. Yeah, it's it's a great tune. He's working with all the young um, artists. I know Lady Gaga is, does a lot with. Oh, right? that that's the uh, godmother of his kids. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, she's very that. cool. I got to work with her when we did the um, uh, the Grammy salute to Elton John. Mm -hmm. uh, that was 2018 at the Garden, and I conducted um, the choir yep. and the string section for Lady Gaga singing your song. Oh, wow. So I met Gaga, and she was so sweet. Yeah. Just so sweet. Met a lot of great people at that show. I bet. Yeah, it was fun. Well, we have... It's great because you've kind of transitioned into a uh, an Elton John trivia game that we're going to play. Oh, I know nothing. Right Nothing. Now. And so uh, Jenna, our great producer here, yes. um, she came up with... Uh, 15 questions 15 15 questions Good lord and uh and then she uh ran these questions by one of her friends who's like a die hard oh, Elton john fan no. oh. and she said what do you think of these questions and reginald he, kenneth Dwight. let's yes. move to the next one right <laughs> that's one of them right of course it is uh, uh, oh you did oh. she got rid that's of funny. it so there it is Everyone yes. knows that. So she uh, she said, "What do you think?" And he said, "Oh, get rid of six and get rid of nine. Oh, and this one's too easy, it. right?" And so, what yeah. if I don't know? What do I win? That's See, what I want to know. <laughs> you win an orange ball. Yes, an orange ball. <laughs> that you can Notice how I took my mouth you. away when I screamed. I just want you. We'll to know get that. that replaced if you win this. <laughs> All right. All right. So you talked about uh, Lady Gaga. Yes. Being um, the godmother, godmother. of yes. his children. Yes. Yes. Um, number one, which member of the Beatles made Elton John the godfather of his son. Oh my God. Um, I would hope it's uh, the godfather of his son. Yes. Good Lord. Um, is it Ringo? I hope. Is it Ringo? It's not Ringo. No. <laughs> I hate this game. You can't call him E anymore. Oh, uh, it's not John. Is it's it? John Lennon. Who, Sean? Yeah. Oh, that's why Julian can be a dick. I get it. <laughs> all right. Now it's all making sense to me. I'm kidding, Julian. Seriously. <laughs> Elton has won five Grammy Awards, <laughs> two Academy Awards, and a Tony Award. Yes. Do you remember what the Tony Award was for? Uh, yeah, it was for a Lion King. Ada. Ada? <laughs> no, is that right? You're telling me Lion King didn't win a Tony? If this information that Jenna oh gave me is God. true. That's insane. Not even Billy Elliot? <laughs> Not even Billy Elliot. Wow. Okay, so far so good. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, and they get harder. <laughs> That's good. Good, I'm here to help. Where's my orange ball I'm not taking now? <laughs> Elton is the only musician to have two consecutive albums debut on the U.S. Billboard 200 <laughs> chart at number one. Come on. Two albums. What were those two albums? It's a trick question. It it's Good by Olympic Road. And uh, no, what the hell was it? It's it, Two albums, number one at the same time. Yep. Uh, well, okay. It wouldn't be anything. Recent. Well, I don't know if it was the same time. It was consecutive albums. Oh, consecutive. That okay. debuted on the U.S. Billboard 200 okay. at number one. Okay. So my guess, uh, would be, let me think here a second. What was after Don't Shoot Me? Um, I would, yeah, I'm going to be wrong. So screw it. Uh, let's go with, um, uh, uh, Captain Fantastic and Caribou. You are 50% correct. No, what was the other one? Captain Fantastic is true. Yes. And Rock of the Westies? Rock of the Westies. Oh, that's wild. See? Yeah, so, okay, that would have been my second guess. Not bad. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll give you the point there. Thank you. 
All right. I got one right. The gigantic Doc Martin stilt boots that were worn by Elton John mm -hmm. as the pinball pinball wizard. Yes. In 1975 musical film Tommy. Yes, yes. Do you know where those boots are now? Uh, in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> Prove me wrong on that one. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, the Smithsonian. They're not. Oh, uh, uh, <clears throat> Cleveland. I don't even know if it, the Northampton Museum. Oh, it's in England. It's yes. in England. Yeah, yes. they were sold by Elton in 1988. Right. And purchased by the R. Griggs Group, mm -hmm. who own them today. Right. Uh, was my third guess. <laughs> Elton John sported his signature eyewear because as a teenager he wanted to look more like american singer songwriter mm -hmm. who would that be phyllis stiller no that's not right mm. uh god and no one knows who phyllis stiller is anymore um who did he want to look like um 50s. Uh, nick drake 50s guy oh 50s guy oh he's in an airplane with la bamba oh uh, uh um I'm giving What's you a his bone name? here. La Bamba, the, uh, uh, oh, come on. It's the guy. Come on, buddy. You got Bamba. this. You got the, this, buddy. Charlie Puth. You got this, buddy. Um, buddy. You got this, buddy. Was it Esai Morales? Buddy. You got this, buddy. Buddy Holly. It's buddy Holly. Yes, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. I knew you had See, it See, I'm in just you. that good, man. I'm mm -hmm. smart. I knew you had it in you. Mm. Elton John has sold how many hundreds of millions of records? Now Ten. This, this is going to be kind of like a guess, right? Multiple choice. 100 million, 200 million, 300 million, or 400 million records worldwide. I'd say 300 million. That's a winner right yeah, there. Yeah, there you go. There Thank you, go. you. Thank you. 1994, Elton John wrote the songs for which animated film with lyricist Tim Rice? Oh, uh, that was... Um, uh, it, it's not Aida. It's uh, a Lion King. It's a Lion, yeah, King. Lion King. You yeah, got yeah, that yeah. one right. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I'm doing better now. See? You get in your groove. According to Elton John and Bernie Taupin. Taupin, yes. Taupin. Uh -huh. In the song Hercules. Hercules. Which type of life do some men like? Is this a multiple choice? It's not. Damn it. Uh, some men the like words. the blank life. Some men kneel and pray some men kneel and pray uh somebody like the the the, the, the some men like the blank the life. the uh the, 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 I, I give up what the hell is it the chinese life chinese that was my i didn't know that i was trying to think of the last time we played that song Hercules, and uh -huh. it was probably 2010. Yeah, um, so it's been a I'm, while. I'm thinking I, I don't remember that <laughs> lyric at all. <laughs> I don't like the Chinese. Yeah, okay, fine. Here. At what age did Elton first play the piano? Five, three years oh, old. Oh, three. Oh, I was close. Oh, yeah. three years old three, playing yeah. the piano. He wasn't really playing. He no. wasn't. Yeah. No. No. How many performances has Sir Elton played at the Madison Square Garden? Oh, that was a big bone of contention. <clears throat> so I'll 41, tell you about that. Do you want me to give you multiple choices? Sure, sure, you got it? sure. Okay, so the multiple choices here are 41, no. 38, 64, or 87. I think it was 64. Okay. Uh, am I right? You're right, but what's the backstory? Okay, so the backstory is, and this is a great story. Mm -hmm. So Elton and Billy Joel were playing tours together quite a bit. And they had a, a falling out, which I'm not privy enough. That could be my ride. Can you guys wait a minute? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Doing an interview here. See, that's the first time we won't Jesus. edit that out, right? Drush? No, you gotta keep that. Yeah, we're gonna man. keep that. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so they were doing this uh, tour together, the Piano Man tour. Both of my heroes in one place, really awesome tour. Mm -hmm. They had some sort of falling out, which I won't, even begin to uh wonder what literally happened they had a falling out still yeah. to this day yeah i don't i don't think they talk much oh. uh i but i don't know honestly i really don't okay but here's the kicker so billy lives in new york i grew up where i grew up long island I'm okay like, you have to so, write a passage you gotta listen to billy joel out there yeah right so so mm -hmm. he decided i guess a couple of years ago to do a residency at madison square garden that pissed the hell off of, Al of Elton because now Billy Joel has played the garden more than Elton. Oh. And see, Elton wasn't doing it um, uh, simultaneously. He wasn't doing it, 
you, you know, uh, how do you say it, back to back. Mm -hmm. uh, he was playing there one year, another year, another. I mean, you know, Billy caught up to Elton in a matter of months. And, and now I think he surpassed them as the artist who's played the garden the most. And I know that was something Elton really treasured was having been that artist ah. who played the garden the most times. Huh. Um, and, and Billy took that record away, I think, but, wow. but you know, it's like Billy is New York. Yes. You know, Elton is no. to me, Elton is, is beyond New York. Yeah. He's, he's the planet. Sure. You know? Yeah. That's, that's interesting backstory, but, yeah. but Billy, and I'm a big fan of Billy. Yeah, of I love Billy too. But uh, Billy doesn't have a song mm. that reference one of my favorite songs, um, although I don't know the name of it, about Johnny in Madison Square Garden, Come Out and Play. Oh, oh, that's Elton's song. Yeah. That's uh, Empty Garden. Empty Garden. Yeah. Yes. One of the most beautiful songs uh, written. It was on the Jump Up album uh, in 1982. How about that for a trivia See? question? Um, and... Uh, um, Elton was not working with Bernie Taupin at that point uh, for for anything consecutive on albums. Mm -hmm. And he was working with a guy by the name of Gary Puckett doing all the lyrics. Gary wrote the song Blue Eyes with Elton. Blue Eyes, you know yeah. that song? Uh -huh. And then he wrote um, Little Genie. Oh, Little Genie. Great song. Right. And then on 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 the Jump Up album... Elton wrote with Bernie, uh, Empty Garden, Hey, Hey, Johnny. Yeah. And that became the classic that is. He's not playing Blue Eyes in concert anymore. He's not playing Little Genie. Sometimes he plays Empty Garden. Yeah. Because it's such a classic, beautifully... I mean, those lyrics that Bernie wrote are... Um, timeless. Oh, my God. It's really timeless. You yeah. know, I mean, it mm -hmm. captured the death of John Lennon so well... And so not literally or on the nose, it was all using so much beautiful, um, uh, you know, wordplay. And uh, was, well, I loved that talk. That well, song. I mean, Elton is synonymous with Diana. I mean, yes. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that song was rewritten for Diana. Um, but yeah, they but were still very close. Yeah. Beautiful piece. Back to number 11. Here. Oh, we're still See? on that. I yes. Did. That was a long answer to that one. God. Hang on, I dropped my ball. He was trying to kind of avoid the last six <laughs> questions here. Yes, yeah. Finish the lyric. Yes. The one, the ones who hold on to the ones they had to leave behind, those that flew and those that fell, the ones that had to stay. Can you sing it? I don't even <laughs> know this song. <laughs> it's not the one. It's a song from Oceans Away. Oh yeah, no, that's diving board. That's that's what I was out in England doing. Oh, that's the song. The ones who hold on to the ones they had oh, to leave it's behind. The first. Oh, the ones that flew and those that fell. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. I know the two. Stay beneath. Yeah, I, here's a funny. I'll tell you a funny story about that that song too. Um, is it is it uh, the song Oceans Away? It is. Yeah, and yeah. So. Uh, so Davey, the guitarist and music director for Elton, uh, said, I want you, you know, you got to learn all. They sent me the album. They said, you know, be ready for the rehearsals. We're going to do London. And uh, this was before I wrote that uh, part to um, the single Home, Home Again. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so he says, don't worry about the piano songs on there. And there's four. Mm -hmm. One of them was Oceans Away. <laughs> so we start the rehearsal. And Elton doesn't remember, because this is, this is great. When he writes in the studio, he sits down, plays, he's done. Mm -hmm. Never plays it again. So he didn't remember how the song Oceans Away went. And he says, Adam, Adam, come here. <laughs> and, and so I'm like, how does Oceans Away? <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at Davey and I'm like, uh, uh, I that think makes it two goes of us. like uh, this. And I kind of remembered it. And then I kind of remembered it more. Mm -hmm. And then I was showing Elton the lick on piano. So there's a great picture one of the videographers got for me of me standing over Elton showing him the chord mm -hmm. to play for Oceans Away. And, uh, <laughs> but there was a panic in my life for Oceans Away that you just reminded me of. <laughs> 
<laughs> Post traumatic stress it is kicking was in here, man. Horrible. <laughs> And it's my fault for listening to Davey telling me, don't worry about the piano songs. He won't play those. So you know what? We're going to blame Davey for not yes, answering this question correctly. Yes, it's good. The answer was, uh, I guess the finishing the lyrics was, beneath a little wooden cross, oceans away. Oh, yep. beneath a little. Yeah, that's yep. right. Yep. This one I think is, I think I didn't know this, but I think it'd be easy to you. Easy to me. Yeah. Yes, yes. So Blossom, Aretha, Nina, and Diana. Mm -hmm. What does this collection of names have to do with Elton John? They're the names of his uh, pianos. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that I know. Okay. I figured you knew that yeah, one. He names all of his pianos. The Watford Football yes, Club. Which in he owns. Elton's hometown. Yes. Named what after him? What did they name? A soccer ball, a pair of cleats, a set of bleachers, or mm -hmm. a field? Um, make the most sense to name the field. You would think so, yeah. right? It's not. It's, it's a not. set of bleachers. Oh, wow, that's what they cheap. named after him. <laughs> the guy owns the team. I mean, you know, I'd call the city that. Nobody heard of Watford before Elton bought the team. Oh, well, he's got the bleachers. Mm. Right? Not too many people have owned bleachers. Yes, no, I haven't. So which ABBA song, ABBA, yes. which ABBA song was the biggest selling single in Australian chart history until it was overtaken by Elton John's Candle in the Wind in 1997? 97? Was ABBA still around? It was. Uh, uh, take a chance on me. That was a good chance, but uh, it was Fernando. Fernando? What a dumb <laughs> song. I hate <laughs> Fernando. Uh, <sighs> last question. Let's I hate your friend too. <laughs> <laughs> what is the color and make of the car mentioned in the song Elton recorded with the Beach Boys? It was in the song Crocodile Rock. Do you remember which car oh, sure. that was? I remember. It was our, it was our, there's a car in that song. <laughs> <laughs> the years went by and rocked your side. Susie went with her song. Long nights riding red record word sheen, dreaming of my Chevy and you, my old blue jeans. Your gold Chevy. Yes, yes you got it. Thank you. Wow. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Jesus, this is a tough that gig. Was impressive. Very though, tough man. gig. I had to go through the whole, the whole tune. song in like 16 seconds. <laughs> yeah, we play it all the time. It's not easy to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Wow, that was great. So. Yes. The ball is mine. Yes. Enough about. Balls. Elton. Oh, good. I want to know about Adam. Okay. I'm ready about for Adam. you. Adam. Yes. So. Um, what was it like growing up in your household? Boy, what household? I mean, there's there's been you so and your many. Mom, you said right? Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, my dad, you know, passed when I was eight, so I don't remember a whole lot of that except mm -hmm. for my um, my organ that I had um, and playing it, and uh, the neighbors in the parking lot of the apartment building we lived in came out to listen to me play and started applauding. And yeah. I thought, well, this is the life I want to live. And I think I was five. Hmm. Um, I don't know. What was it like? I was always inventing stuff. I, I, I created um, a game. Okay. So stupid. I, I mean, uh, I put a f an American flag on our couch and I made my friend come over and I had this game I, I created called Stars and Stripes. It was so stupid. Huh. And and for each question he got right, uh, it was a star. And I don't, I don't remember all the rules, but suffice it to say, I was a very strange kid, um, constantly looking for something to keep me entertained. Because mm. we didn't have cell phones, we didn't have computers. Um, it was just fend for yourself. Hmm. And uh, so I would create games. I would write songs. Uh, I'd piss off girls uh, by writing them songs Especially and find Sarah. out Sarah. <laughs> screw that. Yep. And, um, and then I had to put up with a very overprotective mother who I finally uh, made some money from when I wrote a book about her. Ooh, uh, I want to hear, uh, do tell. That's called Smother, S apostrophe Mother. Okay. Uh, available on Amazon and every <laughs> local bookstore. Um, what is this book? It's, it's, it's um, the 
I've, I've collected over 1500 letters that my mom, uh, has written me and they're really, they're really funny, very short letters. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a resistant form of gonorrhea going around, wear a condom, love, <laughs> love mom. Um, you know, stuff that's outlandishly odd and I put up with it. Um, and I wrote a book about it and, uh, it got released, um, Abrams Publishing released it, who did Diary of a Wimpy Kid. And that was really cool. And I'm still trying to get it on television. It's been optioned three different times and huh. whatever. It's, it's a screwed up uh, entertainment business uh, because I have 18 things going on at the same time. And I, <laughs> I don't, I, you know, when you ask me what's life at, at my house like, yeah. it's like, I don't know. Because every week it's a combination of different projects I'm working on. Hmm. And that's always been the case. Um, some people say it's, uh, what do they call people that do um, a Renaissance person? Sure. Uh, I don't know. I just like trying different things. It's like Michael Jordan playing golf. Yeah. Look how well that turned out for him. Yeah. So that's me. Or I, baseball. Right? Or baseball, right. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, you know, I jokingly in my Woody Allen behavior, uh, except for the sleeping with my kid thing, uh, aside from that, I'm very Woody Allen-esque. And I think that I'm like, you know, what, what can I possibly do next uh -huh. uh, to keep me entertained? And... Um, and and that's 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 life with me. Yeah, you know my. I I don't know. I can digress. Do tell if you want me to. So 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 mom, right? Has yeah. mom received a copy of this book? She's in the car. Uh, now. <laughs> She's the one that's beeping. <laughs> yeah, it there. could be. <laughs> Hurry up! I can't breathe. <laughs> Um, what, uh, <laughs> she approves of it because she knows that it's a potential avenue to make uh, money for me and make me happy. There it is at her um, expense. I love it. So, um, <laughs> the best thing happened about a month ago. I had a pitch meeting with, uh, TNT and I'm on with these two execs in a zoom meeting and I have my computer in front of me. And I'm telling them about my mom and my stories and we're shooting the shit. And about seven minutes into it, I say, look, you know, I love my mom, but she drives me nuts. And I hit the table, which hit the computer and it fell into my lap. I'm like, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Pick up the computer and I positioned it a little bit to the right. And there's my mother behind me in a chair tied up in rope and gaffer's tape on her mouth. <laughs> and so the two execs look and they're like, uh, hang, hang on, Adam, Adam is, um, is that your mom? <laughs> and I'm like, what? Oh shit. Um, Joan, this is so-and-so. And so she's like, mm, mm, and great, perfect. And so I take the gaffer's tape off and I thought that meeting would seal the deal. Totally, how Fucking does it not? hysterical. Right. And it didn't because they thought the whole idea was, was too off of TNT's base. <laughs> and you know, I, I thought, let's give him something to remember because I don't care anymore. That, <laughs> that's where I'm at in my life, I don't care. I really don't. I, I care, but I don't. And that's what makes it so crazy and spontaneously fun. So fun. Yeah. Yes. That's what life should be. That's exactly what life should be. Exactly. I love it. Yes. I got to go tape up. Not my mom, but uh, my kids. I'm oh, cool. try that one. Yeah. When I get yeah. home. So mm. smother. You can buy it on Amazon. Yes, you can. I'm going to pick great that for up. the holidays. <laughs> We were talking before he came in, and so I think Jenna could write a book called Smother with about her stories. About my mother? <laughs> Maybe. Wow. And then Josh oh. could write a book about his mom, right? Oh, that's awesome. About their stories. So, yes. Listen. Seems like you're not the only one. I have been trying to get her remarried for years, <laughs> uh, and that just didn't work out. All right, so we are going to uh, finish off what we call Hennessy Heart to Heart. Ooh. Just short little questions that okay. require short little answers. All right. Simple. What do you see as yes. your best? No, wait. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> what do you see as your best character trait? Uh, I think my music is part of my character at this point. So I'd say my music. What inspires you to better yourself? Mm. Uh, probably my family. Sounds like your kids. Yeah. Yep. Would you consider yourself a pessimist or an optimist? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the day. Yeah. It really, that's the most honest answer I can give you. Okay. Because some days I'm my worst pessimist. Mm -hmm. Some days I'm more optimistic than whatever. Okay. So I, I'd say both. That's a good answer. Yeah. Appreciate the honesty. Yep. When were you the most disappointed in yourself? Today. <laughs> <laughs> With your Elton John trivia? Yes, I, I thought I would know so much more. And, and I'm so disappointed. <laughs> I'm so not okay. I'll take that as an answer. Okay. If you could change one thing about the way you look, mm. what would it be? <sighs> How honest do you want me to be? Um, you know, I would have to say uh, I'm fat right now and I don't like being fat. It makes me very sad and feel unhealthy. So I would change my man boobs and my tummy. That's what I would change. <laughs> Do you eat a lot of pasta and pizza? And I do. I like, well, not so much pizza, yeah. but pasta. Yeah, yeah my I'm, wife's Italian. I'm a big pasta guy, yeah, too. I love pasta. It's hard, man. I'm screwed. What, uh, when were you the most proud of yourself? Mm. Boy, that's a good one. I, I mean, you could say kids. You can say, I mean, but honestly, I think when I was looking out from the stage of Madison Square Garden, and I thought, this is good. You can shoot me now. Yeah. That was good. That was, I, I played there five times and I think the first time I did it was the most special. So that's there, your, that's, that's your a, answer. That's a good answer. Not too many people can say that. No, exactly. And that was amazing. Do you put as much effort and emphasis on inner beauty as you do on your outer beauty? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Key. It is. What is something on your bucket list? I want to go to Tahiti. I want to sit on a beach and do absolutely nothing. Okay. That is on my bucket list. Let's so it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> because happen. me doing nothing, it doesn't make sense. Huh. Can't stop your brain. I can't, yeah. What is a long-term goal of yours? Um, I'd like to see my uh, Smothers show get on the air, which now goes by the name of Dear Adam. Um, I'd like, uh, to, yeah, I'd like to see that show come to fruition. Cool. That's a dream. Kind of like the Goldbergs, right? That show. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. Love that show. What is the most important thing? So you've been married 20 years, right? 20 years. What is the most important thing in a relationship? I'm not going to say honesty cause that's a lie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let me think, um, I say making each other laugh uh, because we've gotten through some really difficult times and uh, there are days that I want to kill her and there are days she wants to kill me, like today. And uh, I think if you don't keep laughing, you're doomed. I agree. Yeah. And I can see a lot of laughter in your house. Yeah, definitely. Uh, do you know what your love language is? I, I'm not sure. What does that mean? So there's a book, it's called The Five Love Languages. Okay. And so is uh, Hebrew it's either quality. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just call your love language Hebrew. Hebrew. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what, what is. is it? What's a love language? So there's five, right? Okay. So there is um, praise, right? So like words. Of, okay. Right? Words of uh, affirmation. Yes, yes. Um, there is gifts. Yes, yes. Right? There's physical touch. Um, physical there touch. is acts mm. of service mm -hmm. and there's one more which and quality time god and that's a good time. one lately it's it's acts of service uh and i'll give a real quick plug to what we did over the pandemic uh we started something called quarantella that got a lot of press and um I think um, I saw that. I saw a YouTube video of you playing outside your neighborhood. Yeah, that's that what I was what doing. Was? Yeah. So and, cool. and members of the Elton Band would come and join me. And we did it uh, to raise money 
for nonprofits, and we kept nothing. And we raised 10,000, what am I saying, 10? We raised $20,000 wow. uh, for nonprofits. So doing that and doing it with music was crazy fun, huh. crazy fun. So here's the key though, you need to know your wife's love language. So go read the book. Okay. Because once you learn that, it's gonna be an amazing next 20 years together. Wow. My wife's love language is gifts. Gifts. Gifts, she likes gifts. Wow, yeah. I gotta read this book. Yeah, yep. Um, All right. Do you have any phobias? Yes. Uh, elevators. Um, elevators? Yeah, because I got stuck in one as a kid and it ah. was freaky. My mother called the entire fire department of New Jersey and got them there to bail me out. And I was like, and I think from that day on, I was afraid of elevators. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> How do you handle high stress situations? Um, hmm. How do I handle high stress situations? Um, I like a lot of activities, so I think high stress uh, is great for me because mm -hmm. if someone says they need a film score by next week, I'm full concentrated. So I, I think high stress helps me. Mm. Yeah, deadlines okay. help me. I'm the same. Yeah. Yep. I wait the last minute to last do everything. Last minute, and give then it to I me. Just kinda, yep. yep. What has been the most spiritual experience? Uh, playing for a church uh, and trying to convert them all into Judaism with my music. <laughs> <laughs> Without them knowing. <laughs> Cold old Bali. Come on, sing with me. It's good. Uh, I played piano for a church for uh, 12 years. It was a Unita Unity Church. Uh -huh. And I had them singing more Elton John and Billy Joel and threw in some Jewish songs. It was great. <laughs> that was spiritual. So I was a DJ in a, in a Mexican nightclub. Oh, awesome. <laughs> That's awesome, man. And I don't speak Spanish. Oh, that's brilliant. And so I just had to know how to play the songs and match the beats and stuff. And hey, it worked. It, it, people come brilliant. up request songs. I'm like, I don't know what you're saying. But Funny I'm thing sure. is, I knew you looked familiar. That is crazy. <laughs> it was there that you we were there. met. Yeah. Now it all makes sense. Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> uh, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Uh, I like that uh, Superman eye vision shit. I like to burn things with my eyes. That, that'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. You burn that Uber outside. Is there an Uber? Your, your mom's oh. sitting out there beeping the horn, man. Go home. <laughs> God, you can't get a moment alone. If you can teleport anywhere in the world, where would you go? Cleveland. Only because it's fun to say Cleveland. <laughs> it's the first thing I say when anyone asks me questions about locations. Cleveland. If you could be an animal for a week, what would you be? I probably... Uh, be a horse because okay. uh, they shit a lot and nobody seems to mind. <laughs> They're just like, ah, this is a horse's shit. Don't step in you it. You can be hung like one too, right? There it is. Hey now, yeah. it's a whole other show. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather go back in time to see dinosaurs or jump forward a thousand years to see what the future looks uh, like? Yeah, I want to go ahead. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. That would be cool. Yeah. A thousand years. A thousand years. No dinosaurs for me. What the heck is going on in the world in a thousand years? Right. You might be TikTok famous by then. I don't know, right. man. We'll see. I'm, not, I'm just getting into the TikTok. Yeah? The TikTok. talk Yeah. Okay. It fascinates me that people stare at the screen and look at what people comment. Yeah. That to me is not entertaining. I did a TikTok. I didn't look at the screen. No, huh? So I never knew what was going on. I was just playing huh. in the nude and nobody <laughs> cared. What's your TikTok um, handle? Uh, I think it's Adam J. Chester. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go follow you. Uh, you'll okay. be like the sixth person I follow. Yeah, and you'll yeah. be my seventh follower, I think. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be great. Match made in heaven. That's right. If you can be a character from a hit TV show, who would you be? Tasmanian Devil. Okay. <laughs> I came out of the blue. You just seem to go quick with that one. I, I don't need to think about that. And what mistake did you learn the most from? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> getting married. No, I'm not going to say getting married. Stop it. <laughs> what, what mistake did I learn the most from? <sighs> I don't know. Um... What have I learned the most from? That's I, a hard question. Yeah, right? that's like, that's a what's your greatest deep, failure, right? 
I, I don't I don't know. I mean, I hope not my kids. Did I fuck them up by letting them listen to Kanye West too early? That's what I think. Sometimes I think I, I, I screwed up by playing them Kanye West when they were like three. Yes. Um, maybe uh. that wasn't smart. My friend tried to warn me. And now my oldest Truman is like a singer and, and he's amazing. Huh? He's amazing. Okay. But he sings about stuff that he doesn't know about, or at least I don't think he knows about. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is all my fault. <laughs> Maybe that was my biggest mistake. Okay. I don't know. And I like Kanye West. Yeah. Kinda. I uh -huh. mean, you know, he's okay. I do. Yeah. Well, this has been such an amazing interview, man. I really Thank appreciate you. This is, this you is so much down. fun. It really was. Yeah. And so, uh, well, we've got some things to do. You're gonna have to take me to go do sushi one day. Uh, hey, man, I right? am all over sugarfish. Yes, we can do it. Uh huh. That and the next time you play uh, Cleveland, uh, <laughs> let me know, and I'll come see you. Yes, they, I know they can't wait for me there, man. It's gonna be great. <laughs> Cleveland. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. My pleasure. Thank you. Ooh.